Hello guys, in this tutorial we are going to retopo our hard surface blender sculpting from the previous part and then bring it into Substance Painter for baking and texturing. But before we start, let me announce a new course for Substance Painter made by Martin Kleckner. It is the Substance Painter Launchpad. In this beginner course we learn how to use Substance Painter by example from scratch, the user interface, the tools, the PBR workflow and rendering is explained by real world examples. You find the link to the course to the early access in the description below and I highly recommend it. Ok, so let's get started, here's the Blender project from the previous part. Here is the high poly mesh, but the base mesh is still available, I have this here in the collection base. And we can reuse it for retopo, although we changed the geometry a lot for the high poly mesh. Ok, how to proceed, first of all we see that this is a symmetrical mesh. So we can go ahead and add an edge loop here in the middle by pressing Ctrl and the R key. Because I want to add a mirror modifier to simplify the process of retopology, so I add this edge loop and then switch to vertex selection. Enable X-ray so that we can easily select the parts that we want to remove before we add the mirror modifier. So I remove these vertices and also these ones on the right side. And then we add a mirror modifier for the X and the Y axis. Now I'll go ahead and make the high poly mesh visible again so that we can use it as a kind of reference to see which parts we have to add to the low poly mesh. Ok, first of all add edge loops here at these parts, press Ctrl and R and move them to these edges of the high poly mesh. And don't forget to enable clipping for the mirror modifier, that's important. Ok, another edge loop I will add to the main part and move it to this kind of carved out part here in the middle. And then I bring the view to left auto graphic to add more edge loops and then match the geometry of the high poly mesh. You see the high poly through the low poly because we have X-Ray enabled. Ok, I press Ctrl and R to add one more edge loop here. Then box select this part, one more time. And press G followed by Z to move it upwards along the Z axis. Ok, looks good, another edge loop at this location. Move it a bit upwards. And the last one here. I think this should work, it fits the geometry of the high poly nicely. And the next part is a bit tricky, we have to use the knife tool to cut out a part. Because the distance of this indentation is too large to bake it into the low poly mesh. So I press the K key to activate the knife tool. Click on this edge and then the C key to constrain to the Y axis and then the Enter key to actually cut into the mesh. Ok, then I do the same for the other side. Just turn the view and then activate the knife tool again and cut at the same location. Alright, after this I switch to face selection and select the faces that I don't need anymore. And just press the delete key to remove them. Ok, now we have to fill these parts again, so I switch to edge selection, select these edges and press F to fill. Great, the next thing will be to inflate these parts for which we added the edge loops, just to bring them to the same size as for the high poly mesh, so I go to face selection and select these faces. And there's a nice tool that we can use in edit mode which is called extrude along normals. You find it here as a sub tool. And now just left click and drag and you can see how the size is changing exactly the way we need it. Perhaps increase the size a bit more, press the S key and scale it. 
and I think we can go with that. Alright, and now comes another tricky part, and this is cutting holes into the mesh. Well, basically it isn't that tricky, we have to select the low poly mesh and execute a boolean operation at the position where we have the holes in the high poly mesh. So I activate the 3D cursor tool and set it to a location like here, so that a cylinder can be added where the hole should be. Then I switch to edit mode and scale it down. And yeah, it really fits the hole. So we can just go ahead and press S and set to increase the size for the set axis. And now we can use this to cut into the mesh. Okay, so let's add the boolean modifier. I select the low poly mesh first. And then on the modifiers panel, I choose add modifier. And select boolean. Okay, now I move this above the mirror modifier, that's important. And I use the cylinder for the object. The operation has to be set to difference and now you can see the hole is cut into all the mirrored parts. Okay, now we can apply the boolean and delete the cylinder, we don't need it anymore. And now let's have a look at the mesh and I see something is wrong here. The filling is wrong and oh, I also think we scaled this by accident. I guess we have to do this again, we have to remove these parts. You see this, it's not connected. Anyway, it's good to have modeling practice, so let's remove these faces. All these can be removed. And then we have to fill these again, but this time we do it right. So select these three edges and then press the F key. Okay, that's a pretty good retopo mesh. I think we can bake the high poly details to it nicely, so we can apply the mirror modifier now. And then I select merge by distance just to check if we have any duplicated vertices. But it doesn't seem to be like that. We have some n-gons around the holes, but I won't try angulate and try to go with the n-gons. For it's a hard surface mesh that won't be animated. This will work in most cases. So we can go ahead and UV unwrap the low poly mesh, I press U and Smart UV Project. That's a quick and dirty way of UV unwrapping, but for the sake of this tutorial and because we are going to texture it with Substance Painter, this should work pretty good. So it's time to export the meshes, first I select the high poly mesh and go to File Export FBX. Here select Mesh for the object type and check Selected Objects Only and as you can see I already exported these before for testing. I will export the high poly as Hard Surface Retopo HP FBX. This takes some time for it's a high poly mesh and then I select the low poly mesh and set the shading of this to smooth. Okay, after that I export it the same way, go to File, Export, FBX, use the same parameters and export it as Hard Surface Retopo LP FBX. Great, and now we can start Substance Painter to bake the mesh maps and add a material to the mesh. To start a new project I choose File, New and in the dialog I select the low poly mesh. This one with the suffix LP that we exported. And then I press the OK button. So here's the low poly with a smooth shading. You don't see any details, but they will return when we go to the texture set settings and bake the mesh maps. We are going to bake the details now into the mesh we don't need the ID map and then we select the high poly mesh for the high definition meshes, then set the front and rear distance to a higher value like 0.03. I found out that's a good value for baking this kind of meshes. And I also set the anti-aliasing to a subsampling of 4x4. Okay, now we're going to bake the mesh maps. And you can see the maps while they are baked. And when it is completed I press OK and you can see the high poly details baked onto the low poly mesh. And this actually looks like a pretty good bake. 
No obvious errors, no artifacts. Pretty nice. Okay, I'm happy with this, so I can go ahead and drag, for example, a smart material onto this mesh and see how it looks like. Okay, good, you can see the curvature, the normals. The material has a nice rust and some great roughness parts. If you like, you can change the display settings to make it really pop. For example, bring in the environment, some bloom effect or as it is called in Substance Painter, glare, a vignette, tone mapping, as you like, just play around with these settings. But again, if you are interested in a detailed beginner course for Substance Painter, check out the Substance Painter launchpad, the link is in the description below. Ok guys, if you like this content, then don't forget to subscribe to JNM if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, then add these to the comments below and I will try to answer these as best and soon as I can. Follow me on my Instagram, on Facebook, Twitter or support me as my patron and I'll see you on JNM.